All right, hi everybody, and welcome back. Uh, we are going to talk about one of my favorite services at reInvent this year, which is the Cloud9 Editor. We're going to talk about some of the integrations. I'm here on stage uh, with Leo, uh, Ruben, and Henry, um, who are from three different teams that have all used Cloud9 and ha are going to talk about some integrations with Cloud9. Uh, but let's start talking about what Cloud9 is. Uh, do you mind telling us about it? Sure. Um and tell us about yourself as well. Uh, sure. My name is Ruben Daniels, and I'm the general manager of AWS Cloud9. Um, previously, I uh, was the founder and CEO of uh, Cloud9, and um, obviously we joined Amazon a, a little over a year ago. And Cloud9 is really, um, you know, it's, it's a cloud-based IDE, and we try to reimagine what it means to develop you know, in a modern world where applications live in the cloud. Um, and I can, of course, talk a lot more about it. But in a nutshell, that's that. Well, I can actually walk some people through it and, and tell you about it as we're going. Um, if we want to switch to my screen. So this is what you get when you go to the Cloud9 console, is you have this dashboard that kind of opens up and tells you what it is, how it works. But I thought we'd just click over, create an environment, something like Twitch is the best. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we'll go to next step. You can see I can provision whatever kind of instance size I want. Uh, and because my boss is here, we'll go for an M4 16x large. Uh, and if I didn't want to connect to an EC2 instance, I could, any of my existing instances, I could go and have it SSH into those by providing the public key uh, and putting that key into the known hosts. Um, and I have an IAM service role. And then I can do various network settings, like putting it into a VPC to give it access to some of my shared resources uh, securely. So I'm going to click Create Environment. And this may take uh, like two, three minutes, in my experience, to kind of provision. But what I'm going to do is I've already got one provisioned over in another region. Uh, but you can see this kind of preview of it all comes up right away. Um, switching to another region. So this one is already spun up. And the first thing I want to point out is that I already have you know, a terminal here in the bottom. So I've got everything that I need. I could even open up Vim if I wanted to. But I don't have to, because the uh, editor comes built in with Vim. And so I mean, I can even yank lines, I can paste lines, all that good stuff. Uh, I have visual select mode. I can even use macros, all the things that I'm used to in Vim. I realize not all of you are Vim users, so it also has Emacs mode if your fingers are broken. Um, <laughs> and it has uh, support for Sublime and other kind of key modes. And then it has this very rich key binding editor. It has integrations with all kinds of different things. So uh, if you click over to this AWS Resources tab, you can see there's this uh, uh, remote functions thing. So I can double click on one of these functions. Uh, and it will import it into my environment. And I can go and I can up, it'll automatically open the handler for that Lambda function for me. Uh, and I can do everything that I need to there. Uh, can't open that one, because that's a secret. <laughs> uh, and then we have all kinds of collaborative features as well, as well as a built-in debugger. I mean, this thing is just chock full of like super powerful features. And, I got to say, I, I've loved using it. Every demo that I built for reInvent this year for any of the blog posts, I built using this editor. So I would have to say it's, it's super powerful. And not only is it super powerful, it also has integrations with CodeStar. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about CodeStar? Sure. Uh, my name's Henry Hahn. I'm a principal product manager uh, that works on the development tools here at AWS. CodeStar is a feature of a uh, service of AWS that lets customers quickly set up a DevOps type of project. Really, everything from source control to build to deployment. We're particularly excited about Cloud9 because today you can actually build a new CodeStar project or create a new CodeStar project. It takes just a few clicks, and you can add a Cloud9 environment to that. Now, what's really cool about that is unlike, say, uh, cloning your code locally and using your local editor and actually setting up everything yourself, We've made that so it's automatically configured with Cloud9. So I was particularly excited. It was uh, uh, actually yesterday I was working on a talk that I gave. And I think it took me about five minutes to go from a no project to running project with source control to build to deployment and then change my code from a simple Hello World application, which is what you get, to an actual functioning microservice using Cloud9, committed that, and deployed it. And just a matter of minutes. I mean, I just did it while you were talking. <laughs> so it's an extremely powerful integration. And CodeStar itself is already a, a super powerful service that has a ton of features that allow people to not just run 
these these full projects with their CI/CD pipeline pre-configured and the the hooks and the 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 other monitoring components that are normally a little bit uh, more disparate in the AWS console. It, it brings all of those together, but then it also lets you provision your own Jira, um, all kinds of stuff like that. And it's yep. just a super super powerful tool that I think people who are getting started, which uh, are many of the developers who are watching on Twitch, I think a lot of you guys would benefit from opening up the CodeStar console and playing around and kind of learning about it. And then it's also useful for people who are fairly experienced developers but don't want to spend the time setting up all of this stuff. Uh, and you work with a lot of people in the public sector, right? Can you tell us about yourself? And Yeah. So I'm Leo Janowski. I'm a principal solutions architect. And uh, I work with a lot of ed techs and universities as well. And so I think uh, this is really big for my customers uh, because now you can set up a development environment in minutes. So I remember like, back in the day when I was you know, in high school and college, we'd have to have all this time to bootstrap our environments. Now you can you know, have a workspace or you can just anything else with a web browser and uh, connect to Cloud9 and get an environment up and running uh, really quickly. So I think it's super powerful. It removes a lot of uh, undifferentiated heavy lifting that uh, students don't have to do, uh, do anymore. That's really cool. So I want to go back to Ruben and I want to ask, why did you guys choose to build this IDE? What, what was missing in the, we, at Amazon we work backwards from the customer and I, I'm curious, what was missing from the traditional IDE experience that you guys wanted to enhance here? Yeah, well, you know, when you're developing uh, on a local machine, there's um, you know, a lot of stuff that you have to do to get started. You need to configure your own machine, um, you need to install the IDE and all their plugins, you need to um, install the, the stack that you're using, whether or not that's uh, a LAMP stack or, or a Tomcat or whatever. It's, it's just a lot of work to get started. You need to make it uh, match with the production environment, which of course never really works. And then after you've done all that work, now you can start and, uh, and, and write your code. And this is not uh, something you do once, but you do that for every project that you have. And in the, in the team, every member of the team has to do that uh, as well. Uh, besides that, you're stuck to a single laptop instead of being able to uh, work together uh, with, with others on that same uh, code in a, in a real-time fashion. That's not possible when it's on a, on a single laptop. Um, and that collaboration is just awesome. I, we, the entire blog team was playing around with it, and it, we had a great time. Yeah, it's 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 super useful for remote teams. If uh, you know, if you just or if you just want to work um, at at home, sometimes it's uh, it's it's a great way to uh, to collaborate, to pair program, and uh, uh, and so on. Um, yeah, so, so really we wanted to, to make something that, uh, that people can access through a browser. You know, the only thing you need really is a browser and you, you get everything that, uh, that you need and you can access it from any system. Uh, so if you don't bring your laptop, your laptop gets stolen, all the things that, that happen to you, you have it right there in your hands. So we have a question from the Twitch stream, which is IVH3Z. I have no idea how to pronounce that name, but he uh, or she would like to know, can I run Cloud9 on premises? Um, so I, I, I guess the question is, um, is it possible to, to take Cloud9 and install it on your own um, uh, cloud or something like that? Uh, that's, not, um, uh, that's not the focus of, um, uh, of, the, of the product. The product uh, lives as an AWS service. Um, however, you are able to connect it to um, your own infrastructure, whether or not it lives in a VPC, or we have a feature um, that allows you to basically create an SSH connection to any machine on the internet. So it doesn't matter where your machine uh, lives, if it has an SSH connection, you can use Cloud9 to develop uh, on it. Awesome, and we have a few other questions from the stream. Uh, the, the same person would like to know, is this generally available now? Yes, it is. <laughs> you can access it right now. <laughs> Just go to the AWS console, log in, uh, look for Cloud9, and you can get started right away. And then uh, Andreas SW2000 would like to know which version control systems are supported. And I can take that question, or you can. Yeah, well, go ahead. So the, it comes built in with Git. There's basically an AMI that's spun up underneath that's, uh, or uh, there's something spun up underneath, and it's pretty <laughs> powerful. Uh, it has a lot of tools built in. One of those chief tools, which is not version control, is the SAM local CLI and the serverless application model, the AWS CLI. These are all pre-configured for you uh, with all of your credentials and authentication and stuff set up. But the uh, version control system built in is Git, but that doesn't mean you're limited to that. You can install, because you have direct terminal access, you can install Perforce or, I mean, that's a joke, you would never install Perforce, uh, or, or Subversion, or if you are working with a legacy code base, CVS, um, which is basically the same as mailing your code. Um, 
And I mean like snail mail. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, and we have one more question from the stream, which is uh, from uh, Lari17. Um, can I import a project from GitHub to CodeStar and use it with Cloud9? So the question is, can I uh, pull in an existing repo from GitHub into CodeStar? It's not a feature that we support today. The uh, CodeStar does have integration with GitHub. I did so, see that, yeah. Yeah, so you actually, you can use CodeCommit, which is the AWS source control service, or you can choose to use GitHub. And we'll automatically, with uh, the right OAuth permissions that you grant it, we'll actually set up that GitHub project so you can use GitHub as your source control for your, for your overall CodeStar project. I mean, that's just perfect. That basically solves this question. Uh, and then we have another question from the stream. Lots of people asking this. Uh, uh, so the, this is the same question again from IAV H3Z, which is when I was setting up the Cloud9 environment just now, there was an option to create a new EC2 instance and the option to connect to whatever remote server. Uh, can that remote server be my laptop? Uh, and I will say that if you have a public IP and you put this key into your known host, then yes, technically it could be your laptop. Might not be the best workflow, but it works. Uh, something to consider. So. I'm, I'm curious, I've outlined a lot of different features for Cloud9, but what is your personal favorite feature? Um, well, I mean, be, besides the big ones like collaboration and so on, um, I think it's multiple cursors. Multiple cursors? Yeah, the multiple cursors implementation of Cloud9, I think, is really, really well done. And it has a, a lot of um, features that allow you to really easily uh, edit things. I can, I can quickly show it uh, to you here. Yeah, we um, can cut over to the screen. Yeah. I'm sorry, it's on. Yeah, no. <laughs> I, I, I'm not a, so um, you know, let's say import. I, I want to change all these imports. I can very quickly just uh, all select them and change them to uh, you know to, to whatever I want, and um, you know traverse over these. I can copy these and um, uh, you know do 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 fun stuff uh, with with. Oh. Uh oh. I'm sorry, I have lots and lots of different key by My laptop is not easily used. <laughs> I'm sorry, but an anyway, you, you, can, you can see the power here of, um, uh, of multiple curses. And uh, yeah, I really love that feature. Way cool. If, um, if I had more time, I would, I would kind of like invite some friends on the Twitch stream to come in and, and write some code with us. But unfortunately, we don't have enough time. I did want to talk for one moment about how you think this is going to transform education and, and mm -hmm. customers who, who may not necessarily need their own ID every time. Like uh, this is, It seems great for students. Yeah. So I think it's going to be great for students. And also, uh, there's, we have a lot of ed tech customers. So now they can build an ID right into their product, right? So they have an integration of this. Sort of like the Lambda console did today. Yeah, exactly. So I think it's going to be huge. Um, I think, yeah, for students, you know, just being able to get an environment up without having to have a laptop, just anything with a web browser, I, I think that, that's something that's going to be super useful to a lot of my customers. And. Uh, so there's, there's so much detail here that I would really love to dive into. I mean, the ACE editor, which is what backs this kind of this, this editing component, is just really, really powerful and full-featured. It lets you do all kinds of different things. Uh, and I'm trying to, to, to figure out the, the best way for people to get started beyond just the console. You know, what, what, is, what is a great example project that people could use to, to just launch into this? I mean, CodeStar obviously is the best way, but you know, if you guys were to start something right now and you were going to show off the all the amazing features, which project would you choose? And don't say Ruby. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I mean, be, beyond the language, I think it's it's best to just start with a Lambda function. I right? think so too. It's, it's self-contained. Um, it's very, very easy to create one uh, right from within the IDE. There are a bunch of blueprints with all sorts of different functionalities that you can choose from. Uh, you know, anything from just creating an API gateway application to doing a, a Twilio app and uh, something like that. So um, yeah, that would be definitely my recommendation there. There you go. So I can go right now. I can create a function. And we're going to get off stage in just one second. But I just want to make sure. Um, that I can generate this function, deploy it, and then I'll post the URL live um, for, this is just going to be a simple echo function. Um, and I'll save this. I'll deploy it to Lambda. Um, where is the little button for deploying? So I can run it locally. I can test it all locally. 
And then when I'm ready to be done testing it locally, I just click Upload. It'll deploy it. And I'll paste the URL in Twitch chat. Uh, unfortunately, we are out of time. I really want to encourage everybody to check out this editor. It is, it is awesome, and I love playing with it. Thank you guys for giving me early access. Thank uh, you. And thank you guys for tuning in. Don't leave. We have more announcements coming up.